So welcome back to Harlequin Place, Alan Wake. We left off in the forestry camp, the woodcutter camp. Sorry. Oh, look at this. Oh, wasting bullets. <laughs> um, yeah, we are looking for a telephone, aren't we? Because we've been in a car crash. And our wife has gone. Is it, well, shotgun ammo? Where? Oh. Turn on. Well, I was just outside for a breath of fresh air, and what a night. I, I know most of you are probably in your beds by now, but if you're still up and around, take a moment. Step outside for a spell and breathe in deep. Mm, the weather is absolutely still, the sky is crystal clear, it's like the forest is quietly breathing along with you. As you listeners know, I'm a, I'm a night owl, and it's on nights like this I wish I wasn't cooped up in the studio. Uh, makes an old man like me wish I could just roam wild. <laughs> but here I am, and it would keep you company all night long if I weren't. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm not the only one staying up late. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, Pat, it's Maurice Horton. Hello, Maurice. What are you up to? Well, I was just taking Toby on his walkies. Oh, isn't it beautiful out there? Sure, but, Pat, the reason I called is that Toby heard something rustling in the undergrowth and took off after it, and I couldn't find it. Probably a rabbit. Sure. Toby loves rabbits. Well, sure. Anyway, I figured that, you know, if anyone runs into Toby, they could grab him. My number's on his collar. And Toby's a friendly dog? <laughs> <laughs> well, Maurice, it's out there now. Hope Toby comes home soon. Yeah, thanks, Pat. You have a good night now. Okay. <sighs> Wanna bet... Place bets that either... A. We will find the dog dead, or B. We will find the dog taken and have to kill it. Music. You'll probably give me a message from YouTube saying that. Well, you have uh, copyrighted material in this video. I actually got that message from the first part. Because it seems mm. the song in the intro was copyrighted. Doesn't matter since I'm not a commercial channel in any way. And even if I were, it would be just me. Well, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to sit here talk about commercial channels. That would break the immersion, wouldn't it? Wake, <laughs> wake, find. At first, page. I kept finding the pages as if by accident. The book I couldn't remember was either a terrible and true prophecy, or an act of creation that had rewritten the world. I began to hunt the pages feverishly, for they held the answer to the mystery. With it, I could save myself. With it, I could save Alice. Okay. Because we get hints from the pages, or...? Oh, look. There's the house. I have gone around a long way. Just like you said. Oh, and what I took for a graphical glitch is actually... The gas, the gas station was closer now. It's light welcoming in the darkness. Okay, I did not really catch what he was saying, except that it was something about a dog. This is obviously the path to go. Well, something strange is going on. Oh, oh shit! Oh no, 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 no. Oh, I can't see, I can't see. Ah! 
I didn't want to, ah I didn't want to fire a flare at him. Did I? No. I didn't know I had a flare gun stick. Did I kill the other guy with that? No? This effect. Oh yeah, there here we go. Oh, more of them. More of them. Oh, you know what? Let's use. The shotgun. Oh! Get away from me. Okay, I will. Yeah, the shotgun was great. But I got a feeling that there will be some sort of boss fights in this game. Oh, what? I think I might be supposed to just, you know, like it. Maybe I did take the right on my way. Oh, oh, light. Let's step into the light. They can't follow me here. No. Here we go. TV. I stepped into the gas station's garage. It was dark and quiet. The place was a mess. It looked like someone trashed the place or that there'd been some kind of fight. Light spilled into the room through an open door at the back, and I made my way toward it. Without any warning, I was blinded by a bright light. An old portable TV on the shelf had come alive by itself. Impossibly, I could see myself on the screen talking like a madman okay so that will happen in a moment right because the page oh, I feel a little bit disoriented now whoa running come on I was running I was running okay oh we don't need to do that so I'm going to keep the flare gun equipped and I'm going to shoot one of the taking guys when they are in the them together to see if that will hurt all of them. 
It's a meal, did he say? Did they call me a meal? Oh, here we go. Oh, look, I can. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Just pure beauty, that is. Oh, look at that. I am Alan Wake, destroyer of shadows. Okay. Wake lies to- The cabin on Cauldron Lake? She asked. The sheriff looked at me suspiciously. The early morning light flooded through the office windows. I would probably never have gotten out of the woods alive without her help. But I couldn't tell her the truth of what I'd faced the previous night. She'd think I was lying or crazy. She'd lock me up, and she wouldn't help me find Alice. Okay. It's so strange reading about what will happen. That is, if I survive this ordeal at first. But obviously, I will only survive with the help of the sheriff. Caution, employees must wear protective eyewears all the time. And I don't want to auto equip. Oh! Right. I got too many. Yeah. Oh, let's. Science. It bestows immortality on those who advance it to elevate all of mankind. Newton, Einstein, Sagan, princes among men. But the price for such a legacy is steep indeed. In Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Quantum Suicide. If our lives are already written, it would take a courageous man to change the script. Having called a press conference, Dr. Barclay Colvin is about to demonstrate that very courage. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I am Dr. Barclay Colvin, and I'm glad so many of you could join me here at the Moorcock Institute. Tonight, Moorcock. I'm going to give a practical demonstration of the many worlds interpretation. As you can see, this is a loaded 9 millimeter pistol. It shall be part of a thought experiment. And now, a real experiment, known as a quantum suicide. Did he say suicide? Is that a real gun? He's kidding, right? Uh, please, please. Stay calm. There is no risk. Observe what occurs when I place the weapon against my own forehead. Now, you might think this round is merely a dud. Not so. Observe the flower pot. And yet, I myself cannot be harmed with this gun. With each pull of the trigger, two new realities branch off. One in which the weapon didn't fire and one where it did. With my machine here, I have ensured that this reality is always the former. I have bestowed upon myself quantum immortality. Under no circumstances can this gun kill me. Uh, so wait, wait, wait. What you're saying is that every time you pull the trigger, in another reality, you die? Yes, yes, of course, but that's completely trivial. There's an infinite number of things that could happen at any moment, and they always do happen somewhere. The point is, this one thing did not happen here. You're insane, Colvin. Insane? Insane? Hey, was this thing supposed to be plugged in? I stumbled on it. You fools! Gaze upon quantum immortality. Poor, poor.
poor Dr. Colvin, felled by his own hubris or the ignorance of the masses. Perhaps he should have left the crate unopened, the decaying atom unobserved. Curiosity often kills the cat in night springs. Yeah. That was actually pretty interesting apart from the horrendous acting. Some awful acting. But the idea of quantum is inside of it. Oh look oh, oh what's going to happen now? Oh no I I'm I think I'm going to stay here. Yes, I'm going to stay here. I'm I'm perfectly fine with this. This is one of the uh, one of the many realities where I feel like hey, I can uh, stay here. Come on, that's not safe. That's not safe at all. Besides, is this crazy? Oh, look. Stuck it. Oh, no. The engine stuck it. Stuck it. Stuck it. Stuck it. Would I be, would there be like, oh come on, I am running and I'm dodging, come on, that is such bullshit, do I, he told me to sometimes, it was better to run than to fight. Then they should give me a chance to actually run. Oh no! Yeah, I know that was my fault. So I should why, is it, why isn't he running? Yeah, that was all my fault. So this is. I'm probably supposed to deal with this place, right? Okay. So I will not blame the game for my shortcomings. Yes, yes, good, good. I'm getting really tired now. No. Even with the engine. Okay, no, I, I get it, I get it. I get what I'm supposed to be to. Oh, come on! Can't just teleport, right? Oh, okay, so. That, okay, that, that's yes. Because I'm trying to run, but since he's too close, I am actually dodging instead of running. Oh, okay, no. Well, there we go. That's what we're talking Stucky's about. Stucky's body vanished, leaving behind only a lifetime of nightmares to come. <laughs> Assuming I'd reach the lights of the gas station alive. Yeah. Uh, I wonder why this is happening. Because the nightmare started before we met the crazy lady in the bathroom. 
right? Yeah, it did. It is something with this place and with... Is, is this a Silent Hill kind of thing where I'm being haunted by my own uh, demons and shortcomings? Or killing the taken people are I recognized the parade float I had seen in Bright Falls when I first arrived with Alice. Or killing them is a way of uh, clearing his mind from the writer's block, and finding pages is a way to find what he was meant, to, what he was going to write. Like when I write, I have all sometimes almost complete chapters in my head but not on paper. After the insanity I had just experienced in the darkness, the lights of the gas station felt comforting. At least for a moment, the sane world reasserted itself. Yeah, but we know that shit is going to happen here, Alan. But I am actually going to save it here because it is getting a bit too late right now and I have to get up in the morning thank you so much for sticking with me take care I will see you in the next video